I am about a week away from flying to Spain to walk the Camino de Santiago. I've been wanting to walk this 500 mile religious pilgrimage for about 15 years. A few years ago, I thought I would be walking this way of St. James with my husband, but as it turns out, it will be a solo trip to deal with the upcoming divorce. I'm also a few days away from shaving this all off. I'm gonna be shaving it for charity and it'll just be easier to not have hair when I backpack across the country. And it's the last thing basically that I have that I had with him. So off it goes. So I feel ready for this trip. Mostly I'm ready to stop crying every day. I'm ready to not collapse as I just walk through the house. I just fall to the ground and sob from the pain. I'm ready to give up this hurt. I'm ready to hopefully find a way to forgive the person who I trusted the most and ended up betraying me. I'm ready to pack my bags and just walk. I'm ready. Here, walking around the city of St. Jean, uh, I probably would not have done this. My backpack was not MIA. So I have nothing except for the clothes on my back and my camera equipment. That's a lesson learned. Do not just put camera equipment in your carry-on. The friendly lady at the pilgrim office lent me some clothes and gave me some things that people had left behind, including the sweet Marty McFly vest. Hopefully my backpack arrives so I can start this journey and see what will unfold. Well, my bag didn't arrive yesterday, so I went to the pilgrim store across from the pilgrim's office and bought a small backpack and just the essentials so I could start my trip. So, I think that I just crossed into Spain. Uh, I was walking above the road, and when I came down to cross the road, all of a sudden signs were in Spanish, and I see a Spanish flag, so pretty sure, but don't know where the actual line was. Yeah, this definitely seems like I'm going back the way I came from. I think I'm crossing the street again. Yeah, I definitely just made a circle, so... Let's check the handy-dandy map. It's probably the worst one. It's the smallest stop that just scared the crap out of me. <laughs> I try to see it from his point of view for some stuff, but I feel right and I feel vindicated and I feel all these things. So I feel like I'm letting him off the hook. I don't know. I don't know how this is all gonna go down. We'll see. It's a journey and I have 500 miles to figure it all out. Today I walked with three women from the US I had met at the albergue last night. We started talking about the idea of free will and I reflected that I can't control the things that my husband did that caused me pain and he couldn't control the things that I might have done that hurt him. And at the Pilgrim Mass, I thought about how God's love far surpasses any human love. So how much more it must hurt him when we do these things that hurt each other. And off to the side, there's this crucifix. And just looking at it, it reminded me that Jesus died for everybody, the most saintly person and the biggest of sinners. He died for every single person, my husband, and me. And as we said, the Our Father during Mass, and yes, we were saying it in Spanish, but I know the words, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So for me, it's not really an option. I have to find a way to forgive. So I just prayed that God would root out of me this anger that I feel and lead me hopefully to a place of forgiveness. The 
night that I met Leah, for the first time, I just, I felt lonely. I was praying that night, just asking, quite frankly, for God to send me a friend. And in walks Leah. So you have absolutely no control over someone else's reaction, someone else's feelings, um, someone else's thoughts. So if you're in a situation that you think needs requires or deserves some kind of forgiveness, whether it's on your part or on their part. All you can control is yourself and your own experience in that. And I thought, wow, there are so many people that live their lives just hanging on to different pains and hurts and grudges. And you had decided to just dive right in, you know, and really work on forgiveness. and. I thought, well, I mean, even if you don't make it in the time you do the Camino, um, at the very least, you're probably going to be miles ahead because you, you took it on, mm -hmm. you know, and you made it, you know, you made it important. You made it your focus. And yes, yeah, so I, I definitely think that the forgiveness is a conscious thing. Snejana and I became very fast friends after we met in an albergue. We walked the entire next day together, having lots of wonderful conversation. And, and then we had a treat yourself day where we had an entire meal of chocolate and split a hotel room so that we wouldn't have to share a bathroom with anybody else for once along the way. Forgiveness is something that it's about you. After you've been hurt, it's actually your, the way you try to process, you try to forgive. At this point in time, the person that did hurt you probably is even not caring about it. So it's actually about you and about you not hurting yourself anymore. Just about how you try to let it go. It can be tough. Like, it, it is so hurtful and it is, you have to really process that and to go through this forgiveness only with the people whom you really love. Mm. Because the impact of them is much higher than the impact of this of a stranger. Another day, another 13 miles of walking. Trying to do some reflecting on myself, not just my husband. But it's a little difficult with all these things that keep popping up to make me think of him. The Citadel and St. John. I've only seen one other citadel in my life, which was on the island of Gozo in Malta on our 10-year anniversary trip, so of course I thought about that, and walked into a cafe yesterday, and they're playing a song from the movie Clue, which is the song that we entered our reception to. Seriously? I'm in a tiny town in Spain, and they're not playing Spanish music, they're playing that? It keeps happening. Even quite inconsequential things have meaning for me, um, you know, but I guess that's to be expected. You're with someone for 14 years, and a third of your life's memories are with that person. So things just keep popping up. Meanwhile, there's a woman that keeps seeing stones and other things in the shapes of hearts, which she takes as signs of love from her late husband. And I'm really happy that that's happening to her, but I guess I'd get pangs of jealousy, honestly, because um, here I was expecting to have the rest of my life with my husband and instead he tore away our future. On top of all of these assaults on my emotions, uh, this is becoming quite an assault on my body as well. Training by mall walking in the suburbs of Chicago was not the wisest choice uh, as I climb up and down mountains here. I've been having chest pains, I had an asthma attack the other day, I'm getting blisters on every part of the foot you could imagine. Um, so thank goodness for Compi, the Camino Stable, to get me through the days. Every day you just have to get up and walk, because next town isn't going to come to you. So you just have to face each day on the Camino, whatever it brings, good or bad. So my bag was supposed to be delivered yesterday, and it isn't. My bag has been gone a week. It's supposed to be here today, because I'm leaving tomorrow, and it's not here. They're like, oh yeah, you can just buy other stuff. Well, actually, no, I can't. I can't buy the rock from our house that we sold before Christmas that I was going to leave at the foot of the cross. I can't. I asked people to just storm heaven, get St. Anthony on the case, find our lost things, so he's been slacking for a week.
I met Michael at the top of a mountain when a few of us were taking a lunch break. I busted out my spork that also has a little bit of a serrated edge to be like a knife, and I'm trying to cut an apple. And Michael from Germany is just staring at me in disbelief that I'm actually trying to use this pathetic plastic instrument to cut something. Uh, he just laughs and he takes out this huge knife that he's traveling with and a la Crocodile Dundee, he's like, that's not a knife, this is a knife. to get something out of my passport pouch and I came across my wedding band and my anniversary ring. I hadn't really expected to hold these just yet. I have plans to bury my anniversary ring at the Hill of Forgiveness and then donate my wedding band at the cathedral when I arrive in Santiago. I met Clint at dinner one evening and he's another American from the Midwest. We walked together quite a bit along the way and had a lot of great conversations, including talking about forgiveness. For me, my experience is forgiveness sometimes takes a while. It takes work. Do you think that the other person needs to apologize in order for forgiveness to happen? No, because the other person might not always agree that they did something wrong. So sometimes it's perspective. You know, what one person does thinks that they were justified in doing and as the recipient I may not agree I think the sooner you can forgive and move on I think the better it is I saw the wind turbines and I thought that maybe this was already the hill of forgiveness. Um, I had to deal with sort of three seasons in one, getting up this difficult climb. And then all of a sudden I was there. I saw the cutouts of the pilgrims and realized where I was. And this was the time that I had planned to bury my 10 year anniversary ring. And I really felt ill prepared. I thought I would be in some different place. I didn't feel emotionally ready to let go of anything regarding my husband. But I was starting to think of in the past day or two, forgiving myself for things that I have done in my life. And especially, you know, in my own marriage, I certainly wasn't the perfect wife. So it was a different experience than I had planned, but it was certainly a good one. And I think that it's probably really the, the best first step to forgiving others is to forgive yourself. So I was really grateful for this experience and, and I guess for once I was glad that things didn't work out as planned. Nate is another American I met along the way. We kept leapfrogging each other. We were basically walking the same pace so one day he might get ahead and then the next I would get ahead and we just kept running into each other along the way. I think the one thing that has helped me is, uh, you know, is to kind of contemplate why people do the things they do. 
you know, um, we didn't all go through the same childhood, we didn't all grow up in the same way, um, you know, in a lot of the, uh, the situations we've been in, the experiences we've had, the people that have influenced us throughout our lives can sometimes contribute to the way people act, affect the decision-making process that, that people, people have. So sometimes when you're, you're thinking about someone who has done a wrong to you or, you know, that you're trying to forgive, I think it's helpful to look back and say, what, what has this person gone through that has caused them to decide to take these actions or make these decisions? Uh, you know, this... I don't think by any means justifies the action, people should be held accountable, but as far as the forgiving process, that you understand the reason behind, you know, where they're coming from and, and you know, what led them to, to make these decisions. I was thinking that I was going to send my husband an email to maybe apologize or at least express my understanding for hurts that I caused, but then I just remembered all the crap that he did and... I don't know, I guess I feel like he doesn't deserve anything good from me. I think about, well, we all do crap to each other, but uh, this is just really difficult because I still feel connected to him, and some ways I want him to be happy, but other days I just really don't want anything good for him at all. This is definitely still a struggle. There are remarkably few Catholics that I have met along the way. David is one of them. And on top of that, we have the unfortunate bond of being divorced Catholics, or I will be a soon-to-be divorced Catholic. I find forgiveness I would want easily to come. I, I want to treat somebody the way that I would want to be treated, so I know mm -hmm. I've made mistakes in life. Mm -hmm. And um, I always want to be forgiven, so I'm always like very quick to forgive people. So, I mean, and sometimes... I think uh, to the point where, you know, I've gotten hurt again because it's, uh, you know, sometimes you might forgive and maybe forgive a little bit too uh, quickly yeah. before you're ready to. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, it's a, it's a choice, but I, I find it's a choice that I like gladly like to take. Because mm -hmm. um, I don't like to be in a position where, like, I'm... Uh, I'm really angry with somebody and I can't let go of that anger. Uh -huh. um, so for me, you know, forgiveness is something that I like to do and I like to do in any type of time where I feel like I'm in conflict with somebody. It's really nice to be able to take all this time to think, but it can be really frustrating to only have time to think. If I overthink and just kind of a negative day and I just keep replaying things that happened and to realize that his choices were his choices and his actions were on him they're not on me but oh it's hard to not feel so tiny and so worthless so I know that you know, my worth isn't dependent upon him, but it's hard to get over so much. So sometimes thinking sucks. <laughs> oh, is that the lesson of the day? <laughs> Don't think. So I had a pretty rough day and just had to cry out, collapse to God and say, I can't do this anymore. You just, you have to heal me. And when I went to post my blog on Facebook, the first image I saw was this. I have heard your prayer and I will heal you. healing and kind of how that relates to forgiveness 
and I don't really know how to forgive without forgetting because well I guess it just means that I'm not there yet that I don't know what that's going to look like to be able to acknowledge a memory um, and not let it consume me and just say okay yeah that is something that reminds you of him or yeah that's what he did yeah that's what you did um, but to let it go and to to not just let it stir up all of these negative feelings and um, but yet still have achieved forgiveness those two things it seems like I just want to lobotomize myself of anything that reminds me of him of us of anything and just never remember it again it's not like um, it's not like I've forgotten the hurt of, of times where it's been you know, I've really gotten hurt in life, and I've forgiven. But it's still kind of—it's something you don't—you don't forget. So, uh, um, and and I don't mean like you know you hold that against them, uh -huh. but it's just—it's something that impacted your life. Right. And those kind of those kind of moments, you know, I don't think you ever forget. At least for me, I don't forget. Mm -hmm. um, I, I move on through the forgiveness, but. Okay. Forgetting, I think, I'm, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's those pains in life that, uh, um, I don't know, you, you kind of grow on from, but you don't right. really, you don't really forget. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes you get hurt again in different ways, and it brings up those old, <laughs> those old hurts again. It would be nice if you could forget it, I think. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I think it depends, to be honest. It depends really on the situation. If it's just right, really like one single act, you can really forget and forgive mm -hmm. at the same time. But you can forgive, forgive. but then if uh, the same type, you know, pattern of beha behavior pops up like second, third, first time, mm -hmm. you kind of like, you cannot probably forget this. Yesterday, it was Palm Sunday, so I went to Mass, and during the reading of the Passion, it just struck me that not only did Jesus feel physical pain while he walked among us, he felt emotional pain as well. He was betrayed by Judas, one of his closest 12 friends, and denied by his best friend Peter. So, there's really no feelings that Jesus doesn't know. So, when I am so upset and feel so betrayed by my husband for having done such things... It just occurred to me yesterday after church as I was walking that um, Jesus was fully human. And so he knows exactly how I feel. Um, he had those feelings. So it helps a little bit to remember that, that we're not alone, even when we feel alone. Last night, I had uh, a dream about our court date, and I woke up having an anxiety attack. I was having pretty severe chest pains. I almost was thinking about going to the doctor, the emergency room. It was pretty bad, but it passed eventually. Um, so, yeah, it just hasn't been a very good morning. And I remember when he first moved out and we, I, I called him on the phone and I said, you know, this seems so easy for you. And I hung up on him and he texted me back and he said, it's not easy. But it is easy. It was easy for him to lie to me for 12 years. It was easy for him to talk about me. It was easy for him. I just don't know how to do this without him apologizing.
because that's what it always comes back to when I think about things. It's just he's not sorry. He's not sorry, and that makes me feel like total crap, and it's just it just hurts. When the person that did all this crap is rejecting you. You're like a fool. You've played me for a fool for 12 years. Today, I've been trying to think about, you know, what's holding me back. It did occur to me, what might be holding me back is trust in God. I say I trust God. I trust him completely with my life, but I don't know if I trust him enough to deal with my husband. And this shocked me to realize this. Um, I trust God that he would forgive my husband if he was really sorry. Um, but I guess I'm not letting God deal with him no matter what. Um, I mean, God will do what he wants, doesn't need my permission. But I think that that's holding me back, like my sense of need for vindication or justice or whatever you want to call it that if I don't see that happening in my time frame, then that is, I'm having difficulty really trusting that God will sort it out. I know that God knows everything that he did. God knows every negative thought my husband had about me, every negative word he ever spoke to anybody else about me, every mean-spirited, everything, his intention about everything that he did. Um, God knows it. God knows that he's continuing to lie to me. And I know that. I just have to remember that he knows how he's going to work it out with my husband. Liz and her husband only did a portion of the Camino, so I was only able to spend a few days with them, but I was really grateful for the little bit of time we did have to get to know her and to uh, hear her thoughts. This, like some days I feel like I'm, I'm more okay with how they are and accepting them, and then I have moments where I just get so angry and I argue with them in my head, like, why are you like this? This is not helping me now. So I think it's definitely 
process and I think you can get to the final act, but it's just a continual being very mindful and dealing with the the emotions, you know, one way or the other, ebbing and flowing throughout time. I mean, I've been thinking about this for probably four or five years now. Mm. And I have, I have good days and I have not so great days. You know, you should be saying when, but real forgiveness, that's a big ask. But I think a lot of people forgive for their own benefit. You know, for it's, it's, it's driven more from their own need than the fact that they're actually forgiving what happened. Do you think that forgiving for yourself is then not true forgiveness? Forgiveness is forgiving the other party. It's, it's, right. it's not, you know, forgiveness to heal yourself. I don't think it's forgiveness. Do you think that forgiveness and reconciliation are tied together and have to go hand in hand? Absolutely. I don't think you can separate the two. Because I would think that they could be linked together, reconciliation and forgiveness, but they don't have to be. Because I can choose to forgive my husband, and that's no longer tied into receiving an apology from him. It was. That's, I thought I would need that, and now I don't think that I do. But to your point, forgiveness and, and reconciliation and that, yeah. I, that, I think it's all part of the same package. I don't think you can separate the parcel. It's part of that package. And to separate it out, I'm not sure you're doing it justice. Gordon's thoughts on forgiveness uh, were interesting to, to hear because I, I don't think I agree. I know that I can't live with the pain that I have. And so I guess even if part of my intent on forgiving is, is sort of selfish to have my own mental health back, I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, and when he was talking about reconciliation, I just, I don't see that happening. I, I tried for quite a while with my husband, but you can't make somebody do something that they don't want to do. And at this point, reconciliation is quite an impossibility. And I, I don't think that not being able to reconcile is going to hold me back from forgiving. Um, I hope it doesn't anyway. There are some moments on this trip that I've had planned from the very beginning, like bearing my anniversary ring at the Hill of Forgiveness, but that moment was unplanned and pretty amazing. Came across some rocks, looked like they had spelled something, couldn't make anything out now, and just kind of had actually an out-of-body experience where I felt compelled to write the word forgive, and, and when I stared at it, it felt surprisingly great. So if it could feel that good just to write it, hopefully when I finally get there, it's going to feel amazing. So that really buoyed my spirits. That was, I'm glad that happened. I really needed that today. There's a few points where you can choose different paths to take along the Camino. The one that I chose ended up at an albergue with only a few people. And one of them was Peter, who I had met very briefly along the way previously and at this one, we actually didn't have to rush to get out in the morning like we typically do. So we had a nice leisurely breakfast and talked, and it led to a really great conversation about forgiveness. I guess I thought about it for a long time and realized that if I want to go through with anger and grief, um, that my mochia was pretty full and pretty heavy and I didn't want to carry all that around and so I made an effort to let go piece by piece to think about each thing that happened and mm -hmm. and why I was angry about it and, and how wonderful it would have been if things were different but they weren't um, and bit by bit I let go of it. it she never changed into a different person mm -hmm. And I don't know that I did either. I think that forgiving is an active process that you have to work at. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's tough, you know, like say for forgiveness or something, you don't just like, okay, I'm gonna do it. It's like a, it's a, something you develop. It's like a skill, mm -hmm. you know? I agree. That, and if you do it, you consciously do it over time, then it becomes second nature. 
Forgiveness thoughts? Forgiveness? Uh-huh. I, I find very hard to forgive. Yeah. And I, I hate very much when people betray me. Mm-hmm. And I have some... Yes, I, have, I hate some, some, somebody now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I find very difficult to forgive. Mm-hmm. and very long to forget. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe it's like learning a language. When you first start off, you really have to think, like just for one word, you know? Mm-hmm. But um, over time, if you consciously yeah. act, you know, bring yourself and say, okay, I'll forgive, I'll let my thoughts go. It's hard at first. But over time of repetitively making that effort, then it becomes... I, it's a question of time. Yeah, and I had a small turning point yesterday that to be able to think through everything that he did. Like you say, you would make this list of all like the hurts. And I finally was able to like list them all in my head without like collapsing in tears to say, okay, well, that's what he did. And that's just his character. Like if he did that consistently for 12 years, that's who he is. He's, he's, maybe he'll change, but he might not. And so I think that it's baby steps mm. that mm-hmm. you're not gonna miraculously be able to forgive somebody that especially if they're in your life, but these small little like corners that you'll turn, eventually mm-hmm. they'll add up to a big turn. And you can be happy; you don't have to spend the rest of your life with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> you know with that with those behaviors. I hope I I'm able to do it, <laughs> but it's oh, good to know that theory. <laughs> but you don't have to start out with a big leap mm-hmm. if you decide that that is what you want. A little piece at a time, a little piece and another little piece, and the next day another little piece, mm. a little bit. I even think just the decision <coughs> is a beautiful first step. I agree completely. And and that might be where you are for a while. That you, that's where I was for a long time. For seven months, I've known that I have a desire to forgive, mm-hmm. but that I didn't. But I was never able to take another step. Tomorrow morning at sunrise, I will be at Cruz de Ferro, which is the big iron cross where you bring a rock from your home and you leave it there. So upon this rock that I have from <clears throat> the house I shared with my husband for 12 years, uh, I've written, forgive him, and been carrying it with me for the entire trip, and now it's tomorrow. I'm a little anxious because I really, this is sort of like my forgiveness deadline to myself, which is, um, is completely ridiculous, I know to like decree a day that you need to forgive. So when you and I first met, uh, yes, forgive me, <laughs> but um, your pain and your desperation was palpable. And uh, now you're smiling, your, your energy is like completely shifted, so a lot has obviously happened since we first met. I'm happy to see that. Like I, when we first met too, and you had said that you had planned to forgive your husband, your ex-husband, by the end of the Camino, I was thinking, that's a lofty goal. <laughs> like, 
And also, I was like genuinely worried for you because I, I was like, that's, that's, yeah, I don't know if that's possible. And what if you don't attain that goal? Mm -hmm. And then, and then what is that going to do to right. you? For you to have the fact your relationship has ended, you, there are uh, like a plethora of things, of reactions you could have gone with, and you decided to work on forgiveness. You know, good on you. And so, like I would say to you, look how far you've come. Yeah. It's not over yet. Right. But you've accomplished a lot in a short time, yeah. so you'll be all right. <laughs> I feel like Camino time is almost like dog years. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> one Camino yeah. day is like easy a week, maybe a month. I mean, like even just the fact that when you walked into the cafe and you were smiling and you're so excited to tell me about everything that's been going on. Like literally, it's like you're a different person. You're just, the energy is totally shifted. And so it's pretty, pretty incredible. Pretty incredible. It, it came as a surprise. So now that you've had that moment and that clearly like successful, I guess, I don't yeah. know how else to put it, moment, transformative. Um, like, how do you feel going forward? Like, it's I kind of feel like somebody else is still, like, right? <laughs> now this is like a vacation for you. I'm like, it kind of is. Step by step. Yeah. Camino literally teaches you that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Like, you put one foot in front of the other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is it. This is what I came for. Basically, we have the entire square to ourselves, the two pilgrims and I who walk together. This is the cathedral. There's St. James on the top. And this is what I came for. So I walked across the table. That's what she's dancing for. So all that remains is for me to donate my wedding band at the mass tomorrow when they do the big swingy incense that I always forget the name of. I wrote a letter to the church explaining to them why I'm donating it and hopefully they can sell it and get some money for the church. Put the ring on my finger for the first time in many, many months and sat in the cathedral square. And when I walked into the cathedral for mass, there's just throngs of people and it was a little overwhelming for what I was doing and but a lot of my pilgrim friends they saw me and gave me hugs and they sat with me and then all of a sudden it was time the offering was coming around so I quickly slipped my ring off put it in the note and put it in the offering basket and, and then it was over So I continue to the ocean because, really, who walks almost all the way across the country and stops 80 kilometers short? I went to Messia and ended in Finisterre. So in 40 days, I walked across the country. I walked to find forgiveness and healing, and wouldn't you know, I got it. I asked God to heal me, and he did. I walked across an entire country to have that happened. Something like 950, 970 kilometers. So I don't know if you take that long of a walk, but... A long walk can certainly clear your head. My heart went through a vice, but... It's been bandaged up on the Camino. Or maybe it's been competed up. But that would be more appropriate for the Camino. Slap some compete on my heart and... <laughs> good to go home now. <laughs> The end of the world, the end of my journey. I got what I came for. And then some. <laughs>